Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, you're going to learn that how you can build your Xcode previews using static JSON files. Now, sometimes in your application, you are reading the data from a network call and the network call is returning you JSON. But how can we build that same structure or get the same data without making an actual call using our previews? So let's go ahead and learn about that. In order to do that, the first thing we need is to create a hard-coded JSON file which will contain the result that we are expecting. So I'm gonna to go to the preview content and I'm gonna just add a brand new file. You can call your file anything you want. Make sure it's a JSON file. I'm gonna go ahead and call it post.json. And I'm putting the file inside preview content, which means that it will only be used for the previews or some other things you can use it for, but uh, it's not going to be deployed. So the preview content is just for developers to create the preview, but not really for release purposes. Okay, so I have post.json now. I need some JSON, some hard-coded JSON. Let's go to online. And I'm gonna go ahead and simply say JSON placeholder. I mean, you can actually get any JSON you want. I'm just gonna use JSON placeholder and this will be the JSON that I'll be using. Now, if I go ahead and select all of this and paste it, it is not valid JSON. That's the JSON object that is being returned to you, but that's not the valid JSON. What we want is the JSON string. So we can't really do that we need a JSON string. There are multiple ways of converting JSON string, but one of the ways, and I'm using a Chrome browser, I can simply go and select inspect, go to the console, and I can write some code over here that will allow me to convert this JSON object into JSON string. You can also find some online resources, some online tools that can do that, but since I know JavaScript, it will be easier for me. I'm gonna just go ahead and say result equals to, and I will paste everything that I selected. This means that if I simply call result, you can see that our result is an object that contains 100 different objects, JavaScript objects, representing each post. Now I can simply use json.stringify and pass in the result, and there we go. That's the JSON that I wanted. I can press the copy button to copy all of this JSON. Go back. Now, one of the things you will have to remove is the opening and the closing quote. So let's go ahead and remove that. And there we go. So now this is a valid JSON string. And that's what we wanted. Now, once we have that, we should be able to load this JSON and then give it to our content view so that the content view can display all of that JSON and it will look nice on our previews. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and add another file into my preview content that will be responsible for loading the data. I will simply go ahead and call this file preview data, but you can call this anything you want. I will go ahead and create this class called preview data. You can create separate functions, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create a function called load, which is going to give us a DTO object or some sort of a model or some sort of object that is a representation of the JSON. We are going to provide the name of the file and it's gonna return us an array of those objects. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we are getting the path. Since our file post.json is part of the bundle, I can simply go ahead and use the name of the file and the extension will be JSON. In the end, I can return empty array if something bad happens. Now I can use data contents of the file file will URL path, passing in the path. 
This is going to give us the data. Once we have the data, we have to decode it. Luckily, we can use JSON decoder to decode. And we're decoding it into an array because we are expecting an array of something. Now, if you're not expecting an array of something that you will have to change this code, obviously, to support that. But for our case, we are expecting an array of post uh, objects. We will get the results. And now we can go ahead and return the results. If, however, there is a problem, then perhaps we can simply return an empty array. So this is all fine, but currently we don't really have any codable structure where we can map the JSON to. So let's go ahead and create that structure. I can go ahead and create that structure on its own. Post. Now the things that we're trying to map are ID, title, body, user ID. Now we don't technically have to map every single thing. You can simply map the things that you want. And in this case, I want the ID, title, and body. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a structure. Post, making sure that it is conforming to Codable. It will have an ID, it will have a title, and it will have the body. This will be our object on which the JSON will be decoded to. Okay, so now we can move to our content view. And let's say that we have a separate structure over here that is going to be responsible for displaying all the different content view stuff, meaning all the different posts. So how can we accommodate that? So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file. And we can call it post list view, all right? And the post list view, in order to create the post list view, you need to pass in an array of posts. And this is where our preview data is going to come in handy. We're gonna go through list of posts. The ID will be ID. We will get access to the post and we can say post the title. Now, if I try to preview this, obviously it's gonna complain because we are not passing an array of post. And this is where we can use our preview data. So I can simply go ahead and say post and we can say preview data dot load all the posts. And now if I go ahead and look at the preview, you can see that preview is nice and we don't have to make any requests to the network. We are simply loading the preview content based on the post.json file. So this kind of explains that if you want to build your preview without making the network call and all that stuff, you can always create a preview data file or any other file with a different name and load the response from a JSON file. And that will give you the opportunity to look at the data and how it is being displayed and to even play around with the data. Like if I want to go ahead and display some other part of it, let's say body, I can simply go ahead and add another part over here. I can go ahead and say font, which can be headline, post.body, and there we go. So it looks really nice now. And you can see that we're not making a network call every single time if we want to load something. We can simply ask for the preview data to load it from a JSON file so that the Xcode previews can load it and we can see it and how it looks like. And per both probably it's gonna look like that in the production also when you're actually making a network call because our preview is based on a network JSON result. So depending on your application, it can be really, really handy to create these preview data file and load different responses to feed it to Xcode previews. So this is how you do it. Hope you like it. Thank you. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. I have many different courses ranging from MVVM design pattern using Swift, Swift UI declarative interfaces, Rx Swift, the cookbook course, which is the highest rated course for over 100 recipes, 
core data in iOS, and many more. So definitely check out the YouTube description and check out these courses. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, let me know.